Islands on KGMB and KHNL. This is your source for breaking news. Hawaii News Now at 5. First at 5, one person is dead and two others are hurt in a fiery crash in central Oahu early this morning. The emergency happened on the H2 southbound just after the Lelehua Golf Course Road overpass around 6 o'clock. Police say an SUV was speeding northbound towards Wahiawa when it struck the center guardrail and flipped multiple times onto the southbound lanes. The driver and his two passengers were ejected from the SUV. Over to the right lane, slowed down, and um, seen all of this, seen all of the debris on the ground, and then uh, on the left-hand lane, right in the middle of the lane, I seen um, a person lying down um, in a puddle of blood. And um, I drove a little bit more, maybe about 20, 30 feet, and there's another body, you know, lying down on, on the freeway um, in a puddle of blood also. Um, they, they didn't seem like they are moving. The driver survived and was hospitalized in serious condition. Paramedics also transported his two passengers to the hospital. One of them, a 32-year-old man, died. Investigators say both speed and alcohol were factors in this crash. We should be valued for what we add and bring, just like the rest of the employees at Hawaiian Airlines. Starting tomorrow, more than 2,100 Hawaiian Airlines flight attendants will begin voting on whether they should authorize a strike. They say they deserve better benefits and are underpaid compared to their counterparts in the industry, while Hawaiian is raking in record profits. Our Ashley Nagaoka has more on their demands and the airline's response. This will be the first strike vote by flight attendants in the company's 90-year history. The president of the union's local executive council says that shows how bad negotiations with Hawaiian have been for the last three years. We feel like we're not being valued. We feel like the company is saying, hey, if you don't want to do it, hundreds of, hundreds of people are lining up at the door. To be seen as just a number is really horrific. It's just heartbreaking. Right now, Chung says first-year Hawaiian flight attendants make about $24 an hour, and senior employees earn about $55 an hour, which are lower than their counterparts at other airlines. She says while their hourly rate seems attractive, she says they don't have normal 40-hour work weeks. Really, our pay is 75 hours as a minimum each month. We have flight attendants who have two jobs, three jobs, just to make ends meet. So, for example, our newest flight attendants make on average $23,000 a year. Make you profits every day! The employees, represented by the Association of Flight Attendants, say they are asking for a fair wage increase, better retirement benefits, and an improved sick leave and vacation policy. In a statement, Hawaiian Airlines says its flight attendants deliver the best hospitality in the world and that the company is focused on finalizing a new contract that, quote, recognizes our employees' contributions to our success, reflects our industry standing, and allows Hawaiian to remain competitive and continue to grow. Travelers we spoke to say Hawaiian's flight attendants provide excellent service. I think that they definitely need to get paid more. Um, Respect-wise, they are the best that I've had so and that I've flown with, so I think that they deserve a lot more. I'm kind of shocked to hear that they're actually getting paid less than other airlines. So I always feel safe, they're very informative, and they're always, you know, Anytime I've ever needed something from them, I got it. The company says it has reached tentative agreements on more than half of the sections being negotiated. Flight attendants have three weeks to cast their votes. The vote count is scheduled for November 20th. Ashley Nagaoka, Hawaii News Now. For the second day in a row, no swimming was allowed at a Kauai beach. Lifeguards reported that an eight-foot shark was spotted off of Brennecke's Beach in Poipu Saturday afternoon. They reassessed the area this morning and decided to keep swimmers out of the water until 5 p.m. today. We're still waiting for the latest update. Warning signs were posted. The surf will be rising rapidly today into tomorrow in the country. Here's a live look now at Pipeline 
where you can see some of the surf already coming high up onto the sand. An advisory is up for now, but it will likely be upgraded to a warning soon. Jennifer Robbins is in for Ben tonight. Jen. And we've been talking about this storm quite some time, Lisa. Just south of the Aleutian Islands, you can see the circulation there. And that's what's generating the strong winds that will be translated to swell energy as we go into the next couple of days. There it is for you. How big is it going to be rising rapidly tonight like you were talking about in the country? 14 and 20 on west-facing shores at 10 to 15. Much smaller, of course, in town, east-facing shores at at two to four. As we head in the next several days, getting even bigger, close to warning level conditions, we will see this last at least through Monday night before it subsides. I'll have the rest of your seven day outlook coming up soon. All right, thank you, Jen. The world's most wanted terrorist is dead. President Trump announced that a U.S. commando raid in Syria took out ISIS leader Abu Bakr al Baghdadi. Richard Engel explains how American forces were able to track down the fugitive. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi once called himself the ruler of an Islamic empire. His final hideout is now just a hole in the ground. Witnesses tell us at 11 p.m. local time, U.S. Special Operations Forces swooped down on his safe house on the outskirts of a small Syrian town. 100 elite U.S. troops in eight helicopters flying in for over an hour. Intelligence supported by the CIA, President Trump watching on secure communications. We've had him under surveillance for a couple of weeks. We knew a little bit about where he was going, where he was heading. We knew something about the compound. We knew it had tunnels. Today, this is what our camera found when we visited the town of Barisha, a crater that was Baghdadi's compound, a building nearby with a gaping hole. A large crew of brilliant fighters ran out of those helicopters and blew holes into the side of the building, not wanting to go through the main door because that was booby-trapped. American special ops were on the ground here for about two hours, hunting for Baghdadi and gathering intelligence. Baghdadi hiding in a tunnel, a dog chasing him when he blew himself up. Test results gave certain immediate and totally positive identification. It was him. He died like a dog. He died like a coward. The world is now a much safer place. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi founded ISIS. At its peak, it controlled a large swath of Iraq and Syria. It killed tens of thousands and sent terrorists around the world, killing hundreds more including Americans. Kurdish officials tell us they had a mole inside ISIS, an informant who was trusted by Baghdadi, could visit him, get close to him, and pass on information back to the Kurds, which they shared with the United States. Richard Engel, NBC News, Northern Syria. Happening now, a manhunt is underway in Texas after a gunman opened fire at a Halloween party. Two people were killed and a dozen others were hurt. The shooting took place at an off-campus Texas A&M University commerce event in Greenville. Authorities believe the suspect was targeting one person in a crowd of about 750. We're here like coming to like celebrate something and then like something like this happens. But I mean, I guess this is just the world that we live in now. And when the shots were fired, it was complete chaos as people fled for safety and deputies attempted to locate the shooter. The school says the party was not a school sanctioned event. The FBI is also investigating. California's governor issued a statewide emergency declaration today as wildfires burn out of control. Evacuations expanded to Napa, forcing 180,000 people from their homes. The Kincaid fire in Sonoma County has now charred more than 50,000 acres, and it's being fueled by 90-mile-per-hour winds. Kincaid fire remains the most stubborn challenge that we face uh, and is immediately of top priority and focus. Over 3,000 individuals are working just on the Kincaid fire. It's extremely, extremely dry. So even with or without the wind, we still have that red flag warning due to the fact that the air is so incredibly dry and everything that's here is primed to burn just because of the dryness of it. 
More than two million people are without power as the flames continue to spread. The state's largest utility, PG&E, cut power to 960,000 customers throughout California to reduce the chance of more fires. It is the largest intentional blackout in state history. Former Congressman John Conyers has died. He was the longest serving African American member of Congress and founded the Black Caucus. Police said he died of what appears to be natural causes at his Detroit home. Conyers fought for civil rights and civil liberties, but in 2017, allegations surfaced that he had sexually harassed female staffers. He denied those claims and eventually stepped down, citing health reasons. Conyers was 90 years old. Here at home, the movement of heavy equipment from Kalailoa to a controversial wind farm project in Kahuku is set to resume late tonight. Kamehameha Highway will be closed in both directions from Laniakea Beach to Sunset Beach from midnight to 2 a.m., followed by a roving right lane closure on the highway from Sunset Beach to Kahuku from 2 to 3 a.m. During the last convoy that began on Thursday night, there were no arrests for the first time since the transport started earlier this month. Community members are working on a plan to save Pali Lanes. They're worried that the Kailua Bowling Alley will shut down. Its current lease with landowner Alexander and Baldwin expires in January. They're asking for a long-term lease with hopes to improve the bowling alley. We can't just sit back and do nothing. We have to, we have to do something against A and B. We want to basically just keep bowling in Kailua and renovate Pali Lane so it'll be the newest bowling center in the state. A&B has offered a month-to-month -month lease with the alley, but community advocates say that's not good enough. Community members have now started a new GoFundMe account for their campaign efforts. A Big Island family is searching for its missing service dog along with another pet that disappeared. A two-year-old black pit bull named Crow and a golden retriever called Lula escaped from their home in Pepeakeo yesterday morning. The family says there was a hole in the fence which allowed them to get out. Crow also serves as a therapy dog for Marine vet Sam Supnit. He's helped me keep my, uh, my composure when, I'm, when, when I get excited. Helps me shake off depression when we're, when we're alone. You know, he's like the third son. Our life is not the same without these dogs and we need them. We need them back. My three-year-old daughter just keeps waiting by the window, waiting for them to come home. The family is offering a reward for information that leads them to the animals. You can find details on our website, hawaiinewsnow.com. After the break, a drone is deployed on an innovative mission. Details on the groundbreaking research next. Plus, a fierce competition between Big Island entrepreneurs. Find out which business plan just scored $25,000. But first, a quick reminder for folks living on the Wa'anae Coast, the far westbound lane of Farrington Highway will be closed in Ma'ili. Hawaiian Electric plans to replace a utility pole between Kaukamana and Mana Streets. Work is scheduled from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. tomorrow.